Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar and welcome to YouTube lesson number 100. And to celebrate, today I want to do something slightly different and review this Sire P7, which I've been using for the past 10 or so lessons on this channel and ask, is this the most awesome second bass you can buy? If that sounds good, make sure you check out this video all the way to the end. <music> Hey guys, it's James here from ebassguitar.com and the Bass Lab Plus training program for beginner to intermediate bass players. So today is YouTube lesson number 100 and to celebrate this momentous occasion, we're gonna do something a little bit different. You may have noticed if you follow this channel about 10 lessons ago, I changed bass and started using this Sire Marcus Miller P7 bass guitar. And I've been asked time and time again, can I do a review on this bass? And now is the moment to do that. So guys, before we go any further, I just wanna give a massive thank you to the guys at Anderton's Music in Guildford for supplying me with this bass. I can't recommend them highly enough. They gave me some absolutely fantastic customer service and they're really super knowledgeable about all of the Sire basses. So make sure you check them out. There is a link in the blog post which goes with this lesson to their website. There's also a completely free Sire P7 checklist that we put together to go with this lesson where we're go into more detail about the bass and give you the technical specifications and also give you exclusive access to a 20 minute set of me playing this bass where you can hear my in-ear monitor mix so you really know what this bass sounds like. There's a link in the description where you can grab the bonus video and the checklist. So just before we hit the review section of this lesson, there are probably three core reasons why I ended up choosing this bass. If you followed this channel for a while, you'll know that I've used the Sadowski PJ bass now for probably probably six, seven, eight years. It really is my number one axe, but I needed a second bass because I was ending up with equipment all over the place. And I also wanted something that I could fly for gigs overseas. So this bass came up and within reason, it's relatively similar in terms of specs. So there is a precision style body. There's a J style neck, PJ pickup, uh, combination there and some active electronics. So I thought it was a reasonable bet this bass was going to behave in a similar way. The second one was out of pure curiosity because this brand has been gaining so much traction and I think it's incredible that Marcus Miller has put his name to every single bass in their collection. And then the third reason is that over at eBay's Guitar in the Bass Lab group there, we have lots of students who are in that beginner to intermediate phase and are really motoring forward learning how to play the bass. And I get asked so many times, what is a great second bass? And these were coming up in discussion time and time again. So I thought it was time to get super, super knowledgeable about these instruments and the benefits of actually owning them. So I've had this bass now for a couple of months so I could really play it in and road test it for you guys. This is the version two of the P7, which retails I believe around about the $600 mark or so. My first impressions, this was excellent when it came out of the box. It came with Diodario strings, so it was great to see a recognized brand on there. It was set up with a super low action, which felt great to play. From a, because I'm a double bass player, I've had to raise it a little bit, but it still plays really, really nicely. So let's zoom into specifics and talk about the individual components of this bass. Obviously, the whole bass is incredibly Fender inspired as Marcus Miller has played Fenders now for absolutely donkey's years. So the body here is a precision style body. It's made out of alder wood, which means it's a really good sounding wood. And above all, in my opinion, a nice weight. I believe these bases are around about nine and a half pound mark, but the proof in the pudding for me is whether I can do a two hour gig with it and I've now done plenty of those and come away with absolutely no shoulder ache so I know this is a really nicely weighted bass. Overall, the neck feels fantastic. It's a slim, more kind of jazz bass style neck. It's got 20 frets here with good access up the top. I believe the spacing is medium frets and it's 34 inches, which feels super comfortable to me. I love this decoration of the block in the layers here. But the thing I also love about this, which I believe is unique to the version two, 
is it has a natural finish so there's not this sticky lacquer on the back and the binding as well is really nice as well so this is a beautifully made body and I love the decorative block inlays that they put on it too so between the body and the neck it really is a very very strong combination Next up is the hardware. Let's start with the bridge down here. This is the Marcus Miller bridge here and it feels great. All of the mechanics in it feel absolutely rock solid. The string spacing is 20 mil. I've adjusted it a little bit to get the set up I want and it stayed there really nicely. So the mechanics of this are solid too. Let's talk next about the truss rod. They've given it some fantastic easy access down there through the scratch plate. So I've been tweaking this now and again. It seems very, very solid this base in general depending on what the weather is doing. It's very hot in the UK now, but the setup seems really, really solid so once I've got it where I want it it generally stays which is impressive lastly let's look at the tuning pegs up here these again have been rock solid as well they feel really really nicely geared if you felt bad tuning pegs before often they'll be stiff to move and then they'll suddenly go on you these the gearing is really really smooth and above all the tuning is really really stable across the whole instrument so i found this very very impressive from a hardware perspective and this is often where more budget bases fall down but the sire base definitely doesn't do this it is rock solid hardware so let's talk about the electronics in this base so the most notable thing that we have here is this absolutely beast of a circuit but let's just talk pickups to begin with here we have a precision style pickup here so you get that really nice thuddy precision rocky sound and then you have the jazz bass style pickup here by the bridge, so you can get that punch too. I love the combination of the precision and the jazz. For me, it is the ultimate combination because of the thud and the punch when they're combined. So it's a really good sounding pickups to begin with here. But it's this circuit which is an absolute beast. It is an 18 volt circuit. So inside there, there are actually two nine volt batteries running the circuit, which gives it a ton of headroom. So it's very, very flexible. Flexible. So let me give you a quick run down of all of these controls here. So the first control we have here is a volume control, which is pretty self-explanatory. Then we move on to a pickup blend so we can blend between the neck pickup and the bridge pickup. Next, we have a bass control here. Then we have a middle control, but this is where it gets interesting again. They give you a middle frequency control as well. So you can actually control which frequency band the mid is boosted or cut on. So that is very, very flexible. And then we have a bass control. Then to wrap the whole thing off, we have this passive tone control here. There's some debate whether cutting the top end and actually using a passive tone control, what exactly the differences are when you actually get out in a gig. But for me, I generally prefer using the passive tone control because it gives you that slightly more old school retro sound. So for me, there are loads of controls here, but the trick is to not get inhibited by them. They are all center notching. So to begin with, just click them in on the middle and that is where the base is working completely flat. So the thing I love about this circuit is there is the get out of jail active passive switch here. So we can choose to use the circuitry or we can choose to use it in passive mode where none of the circuitry is needed, which is a great help if your batteries start to run out. But the thing I also love about this is there's very little volume difference between the active setting and the passive setting. So if I play it in active mode like this, and then switch it into passive mode, you only use a few decibels of volume, which makes it very, very useful because you could almost have two separate, well, you can have two separate sounds. You could have a finger style sound set up, then you could kick in the active EQ for maybe a slap sound. So it makes it very, very versatile. This circuit actually reminds me of the John East circuit that I used to have in my overwater bases about eight to 10 years ago, which was super, super flexible. So to get controls and functionality like that, normally you could expect to play, I don't know, three or four hundred dollars for a circuit like that, but that is included in this base. So for a six hundred dollar base to have all of these options is just absolutely extraordinary. 
So let's discover what this bass sounds like now. Obviously sound is a hugely subjective thing. So what I do is I thought I'd just break this down to four core sounds for you. The first sound is going to be the both pickups together. This is the sound that I most commonly use. Then we're going to look at using just the neck pickup here. And then we're gonna use just the bridge pickup here. Then I'm gonna dial in a slap sound. Crucially, I'm gonna leave the EQ completely flat except for the slap sound. What I ask you to do is grab a decent pair of headphones or speakers so you can really appreciate it in its full kind of glory, I guess. So you're listening to it on the best system possible. What I'm gonna do on this end here is mute the lav microphone. So you're literally just hearing the bass going into the Aguila head like that and then out into the recorder via the DI. So you're getting the most purest sound possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the bass solo first of all, and then I'm gonna play it with a backing track so you can hear what this sounds like in context. The tracks we're using here are from the Bass Lab Plus program. So if you're a beginner to intermediate bass player, make sure you check those out over at eebassguitar.com. This track is called Strolling and it is from our Blues Jam track album. One, two, one, two, two. So that was both pickups together, which is typically the sound I would use. But if I was in more of a rock setting, what I would often do is dial it on to the neck pick up here. So this sounds more like this. Let's try that with a track called Sweet Guns, which is from our 30 day killer rock bass action plan over at ebassguitar.com. that was the precision pickup over a kind of rocky feel. Now let's check out the bridge pickup and this is where we can get a real load of cuts like this. And this is more synonymous with the Jaco Pastoria sound. So let's hear what this sounds like playing the legendary bass line from The Chicken. <laughs> So as you can hear, there is a ton of punch from the bridge pickup. Let's hear that in context using the chicken backing track from the Jazz Jam backing track album, which you can get over at ebassguitar.com. Thank you. 
So let's dial in the VAR sound that we're going to look at today, and that is the slap bass sound. So everything I showed you before there was in passive mode, because I always think that's the best way to listen to a bass. So what we're going to do is we're going to engage the preamp now, and it has a slight dip volume lift, and you can also hear it get a little bit more toppy, so that Marcus Miller sound it automatically starts to engage. But what I'm gonna do here is actually dial in that slap sound a little bit more and put the smiley face EQ in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of notches of bass here, I'm gonna add a couple of notches of treble here, and then I'm going to cut the mids a little bit like that, and I'm gonna ensure so I can get the top end that the passive tone control is up on full. And so, and you can hear that sound. Let's take it out so you can just hear it. Then put it in. And there's loads more, there's plenty of headroom. I'm going to dial it in even harder now. So you can really start to get that Marcus Miller tile slap sound. So let's try it with some drums so you can hear the slap sound in context. So I've taken you through the four basic sounds that I think this instrument have, but in reality, that's just the tip of the iceberg. When you start engaging the blend, your hand, the amount of EQ that you're using. So there is so many possibilities. This is just such a super flexible bass. But at the end of the day, this is a Fender style bass. So the sound you're gonna get it is always gonna be reminiscent of a Fender bass, which for me in context sounds absolutely superb. So at the beginning of this lesson, I alluded to the idea of is this the most awesome second bass you can buy so for me I bought this as a second bass but what's actually happened is I've used this on every single gig since I bought it it's that good to be my first bass but what happens with many e-bass guitar students is they get their first bass and it's kind of a starter bass and they start flying through the program and they want to get something better and they're looking for what is that sort of mid-range instrument that's going to really really inspire them and the Sire bass is absolutely that so it is a perfect second bass but reality is this bass works across any part of the spectrum. I know at least three or four other top professional bass players here in the UK which are using these basses for their day-to-day -day work. So I can't recommend this bass high enough and any of the Sire range. There are so many different options there, particularly with their M series and their V series. So there is loads to check out there. So please do go to your local store and check those out. If you're near Anderton's in Guildford in London, make sure you pop in and talk to their guys there because they are super knowledgeable. So to finish this lesson off, I actually want to show you this bass in context and play you some clips of me actually using this bass in the field. So this is recorded directly off the sound desk, the audio that you're going to hear. I encourage you to get a decent pair of headphones to listen to it. Um, it is my in-ear monitor mix, so you can hear, see the little headphones in my ear. That is exactly what I'm listening to there. Bear in mind, we're in relatively small rooms in both times. I have an amp on the floor and there are subs as well, so that will be filling in some of the bottom end, but you're gonna get a pretty good idea of how this bass sounds in context. And you can also see me playing around with the tonal settings as well at times. So this is 100% as it actually happened. So don't forget to grab the free checklist that comes with this lesson so you can see all of the specs written out there because I've definitely made this video from more of a playing perspective. Also, make sure you grab that checklist as well because you'll get access to the 20 minute demonstration video where you can see me playing a whole set on this bass too. So over to the tracks now. <laughs>
guys, that's the end of YouTube lesson number 100. I hope you've enjoyed this review lesson. Big thanks again to Andertons in Guildford for supplying me with the incredible Sire P7 base. I can't recommend their service enough and of course the Sire base itself, it's amazing. So make sure you grab the free Sire base P7 checklist that comes with this lesson and the 20 minute bonus video of me playing this base. There's a link in the description below. Cheers, I've been James from eBay's Guitar and I will catch you next time.